This VAWatchdog.org news video is brought to you by Bergman and Moore, LLC. Former VA attorneys now fighting VA for you. Call Bergman and Moore at 877-838-2889 or on the web at vetlawyers.com. The article that you wrote in the Wall Street Journal in which you disclose this, you say that the, the message is clear, hurry up and die. Well, the message that they want to communicate, I think, is that if you have a stroke or if you have a coma situation, that somehow your life has lost a little value and it may not be worth living anymore. Uh, my problem with the document, Chris, is that the author of it is a proponent of assisted suicide. He's way out there on that issue. And uh, the VA has been using this. A new directive just came out in July urging uh, providers to refer patients to it. So in my view, there should be a balanced treatment. And this is a slippery slope that kind of makes people, when you look at the document, it makes people feel like they're a burden and that they should do the decent thing and die. All right, we're going to get to the specifics in this book in a second, but I want to ask you another general question. President Obama calls talk of a government-run death panel a, quote, extraordinary lie. But I want to put up what uh, you said in your Wall Street Journal article this week. You said the following. When the government can steer vulnerable individuals to conclude for themselves that life is not worth living, who needs a death panel? Explain. Well, I think the fear that Americans have is that somehow when they are fragile and they're vulnerable and they're facing serious illness that a discussion they're going to have with a doctor is going to be biased or tilted in some fashion here you have the government that has a financial stake in the answers that they give and i think a lot of people are afraid that somehow they're going to be steered toward a denial of care and i think that whole right to die movement which dr perlman has written about I think that whole right to die movement means that the right to die is a right the poor will get. And I think a lot of people are afraid about it. So whether there's death panel written in a law or not, the real issue is why would the VA be promoting a document written by an assisted suicide advocate that has such a kind of an obsession with death and, and with pushing people, I think, in a direction to deny care? All right. You are especially critical of this worksheet on page 21 of the book. Right. And I'm going to first tell the audience what's in it, and then I'll talk to you about it. Let's put up this page 21. It's called, What Makes Your Life Worth Living? And it asks the veteran to check off whether a variety of situations are difficult but acceptable, worth living, but just barely, or not worth living. And here are some of the situations. I can no longer walk but get around in a wheelchair. I live in a nursing home. I am a severe financial burden on my family. I cannot seem to shake the blues. Mr. Tui, what's wrong with that? The biggest problem is that when you go beyond those questions to the boxes you check, the first option you have, it's difficult but acceptable. A lot of people with disabilities, a lot of people who have family members with stroke, find life uh, beautiful. Mean, there's meaning and purpose. Sure, they're suffering, but their life hasn't been dimish, diminished by that illness. I think there, if you were trying to be biased and fair, you'd have a box that starts off that says, my life is beautiful. Yes, I suffer, but I find meaning in it. And I think the problem with this document, and it permeates the whole thing, is there's a bias toward a depression. And so when you see the one that says, for example, I can't shake the blues, you can actually check a box that says my life's not worth living. Another one said, "If I can't go outside on my own. So you check a box, life's not I, worth I living. I guess one of the questions I have about it is why would those even be in a document about end of life? Usually people don't even contemplate end of life until they're in an irreversible coma. Why would being in a nursing home or having to live in a wheelchair be a not worth living option? Good question. I think advanced care planning is important. And there are a lot of great VA doctors and nurses out there providing superior care. So families need to talk about these issues well in advance of a deep decline in health. My problem is when you treat individuals like their life has less worth because they have dementia, for example, I think that that's a dangerous slippery slope. And when government has a financial stake in it, they shouldn't be talking about quality of life and kind of pushing people toward a predetermined conclusion. You're also upset about another question in the booklet. I want to put that up. <clears throat> have you ever heard anyone say, if I'm a vegetable, pull the plug? Yeah, I think the word vegetable is demeaning. It's used three times in the document, and it kind of communicates somebody that's not human. This is why I think the document is so fundamentally flawed that the VA ought to throw it out. They've had it out there kind of as a research tool, and then a few years ago they tried to push it and promote it, um, or two years ago tried to push it and promote it, and now they're at it again, a July directive telling health care providers to refer patients to it. All right. Uh, we're, you mentioned earlier one of the primary authors of the workbook, and this is a fellow named Dr. Robert Perlman. 
Uh, he's a member of the VA Center for Ethics and Healthcare, and he's the, listed as the prime author in the document. Who is Dr. Perlman? Well, that's a good question. A lot of Americans have never heard of him, and yet he's influenced the course of VA healthcare. He's written this document, and uh, he's a, an advisor. I think he got the initial research grant with tax dollars to write this document, and, uh, and, I, and he's been an advocate for assisted suicide, both in a U.S. Supreme Court case where he filed an amicus brief, but in other writings where he was a contributor to a book about physician-aided killing. So I think, I think the problem is, in America, there's a lot of people that wrestle with caregiving issues and with serious illness. We should be encouraging people to have a hopeful vision. When a veteran comes back from Iraq, they shouldn't be given a book like this. They should be encouraged to, to, to talk about their preferences on how they can maintain their dignity because uh, that's what I think America owes them. Now, in fairness, uh, the book uh, also offers other uh, ideas and statements for veterans to consider, and let's put those on the screen. My life should be prolonged as long as it can, no matter what its quality, and using any means possible. And then it, there's this. I believe that it is always wrong to withhold, not start, treatments that could keep me alive. Uh, Mr. Tui, aren't both sides presented? Uh, there's, there are lines like that in the book, but if a fair reading of the book, just looking at the cases they give as examples, where the woman that has the stroke that says, I don't want to live if I can't take care of myself. And, uh, and then when you look in the back of the book, Chris, who do they refer you to? The 2007 edition said, go to Compassion and Choices. That's the Hemlock Society. The 1997 version referred you to an organization that was the American Euthanasia Society. I think the bias of the document is clear. Why would Americans be given such a, a poor document, a poor planning tool on a subject so important? Now, we need to point out that those references, which were in the 97 edition and the 2007 edition, are not in the edition that is currently being circulated at the Veterans Administration. That's right. They, they pulled that page after we raised concerns about it, and I think... Uh, it wasn't just aging with dignity, it was a lot of individuals in America that I think when they saw that in the VA system, they're thinking, why are they referring me to the Hemlock Society? All right, you were instrumental, as you point out. Back in 2007, you had left the Bush White House by then. You'd been the head of faith-based initiative for four years. But in 2007, the VA tried to put this out and make this a tool that was widely distributed to veterans. You were instrumental in getting it stopped and put up on a shelf. What happened? Well, I, I think that uh, President Bush was in his administration were very surprised to hear that this document had moved so far through the VA chain of command and was about to be approved. The secretary there didn't even know about it. That's the fear Americans have, of course, is these bureaucracies have a way of uh, getting something out there like this that people don't even know about, Congress never heard of. So when I raised it with the Bush White House, they said, this isn't a vision of life. Uh, People have uh, their dignity. They, it, they're endowed with that. It's not lost when they get dementia or stroke, and so they pulled it. So after President Bush suspended the use of this document, why did the Obama administration last month reinstate it? Good question. I don't fault President Obama on this yet uh, because I suspect he was like President Bush and knew nothing about it. The question is, why hasn't it been pulled from their website now? To put a statement up after the Wall Street Journal piece came out that says uh, this document is currently being revised, uh, that just tells me they're in a damage control mode. What they should be doing is pulling the document and then revise this, this order that told physicians to refer patients to it. Finally, uh, you have been involved with end-of-life issues for years. You worked in an AIDS home back in the 80s. You have written an end-of-life document yourself called Five Wishes, which is widely used around the country. In the course of this controversy in the last couple of days, VA officials are suggesting that you want the government to buy and use your book. They can if they want. Millions of Americans do, but that's not what this is about. That's a not-for-profit aging with dignity. I want Americans to have access to a document that treats their life with respect that's not pushing them to hurry up and die, that's not guilt-tripping them, that's not saying that if you can't shake the blues, maybe you, your life's not worth living. It's the pressure, Chris, and it's wrong for government to do it. There's so many documents out there that help families plan for and discuss end-of-life care. People should access the one they're comfortable with, but the government should not be pushing exclusively this approach. And I think it's wrong, and I think to have an author of the assist that supports assisted suicide doing it is terribly wrong. VAWatchdog.org, the nation's number one independent veterans website. On the web at VAWatchdog.org.